And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Starlink. Sketch Through the Stars, it's called. This is a drawing game in which you're trying to get people to guess what you're drawing, like Pictionary, except in this one, you're drawing constellations, connecting stars to other stars on a big giant star map. That's pretty much the whole game right there, but let's take a closer look. In this game, each player is going to be the artist twice. Now, uh, th what that means on your turn is you're going to draw the top card of a deck of cards, and you're going to draw one of the two things on here. So, I think I'm going to do ladder. That seems pretty easy. Now, the way that you will do this is you'll pick any spot on the board that you want, and you just are connecting stars along that uh, in a straight line. You can't curve. So I'm looking at the board, and I'm thinking, okay, so I'll connect this one to this one, this one to this one, connect those, and then we'll connect these, connect these, connect these, connect these, connect this, connect this, connect this, and I'm hoping that someone guesses ladder. Someone can guess at any point during the drawing. There's this timer that's going to give you as much time, and they just put it in front of them and guess. If they're wrong, they can't guess again until someone else grabs the timer and guesses. If someone guesses it correctly, they're going to win that card, and you're going to both score the points on it, and then you'll just write somewhere on here what it is. It's a ladder. If no one gets it, then you will erase it. However, you're also going to put the telescope. Now, the telescope's important because if you can see the whole constellation inside the telescope, which in this case you can't, but you often can draw one maybe small enough to do that, then you will get an extra point. And so that person will draw an extra card just to keep track of the points. And so you're not using the whole deck, but if I get three points, I'll take three. If it fit in a telescope, I'd get four. And so both the drawer and the guesser will get that many points. Whether someone guessed it correctly or incorrectly, the next person goes. So, ooh, I know what, I'll, I'll, I'll pick one here, and then, then you guys have to guess what it is. All right, I got it. So here we go. I'm going to find a spot on the board. Let's see here. Did you get it? It's glasses. Did it fit inside the thing? Ah, oh, just a little too big. Oh, well, if you had guessed it, you and I would both be getting two points. And that's it. Man, the game looks good as you use these white markers on the board. The game comes with two of them, and so far they haven't run out for me, but I am concerned that when they do run out, it's going to be harder to find a replacement for them. But man, it just looks really good. There's a bunch of cards here in the game, and they have a pretty good selection of words. I think some of them are easier to draw than others, and of course they do too. That's why they have, you know, Pizza and Duck are three stars while you know butterfly and mountain are only two stars but for the most part I don't know you could just pick the, you get two words you pick the one that's easier the quality of the game's good the telescope piece here and a tile fits nice in the board the pencils come with erasers and everything fits inside a nice little insert here it's a really good looking game on the table and I think people are gonna be attracted to it for that reason alone It's funny how the aesthetics of a game can really increase your enjoyment of the game. And I think that does it for this. For me, Pictionary type games are often kind of eh. But this one is fun because it looks really cool. When you're done with the board, it's the kind of board you'll take a picture of. Yeah, some of the constellations are going to be a little weird. But there's just to be fun constellations drawn all over the board. And you could draw them really big, but the game encourages you to keep them a little bit compact by giving you that extra point. And we just found this game to be tremendously entertaining. It gives you restrictions, but at the same time, it's not that hard to draw this stuff in there. You just find a patch of the sky, and the stars are done in such a way that you'll never be able to draw things perfectly, uh, although there might be. I mean, you might find that 
perfect group of stars, so there might be an off arm or something, and it's just it's just a silly fun game to play. It works really well with kids, gives them some directions, it's connecting dots. You just draw the straight lines and make these different shapes. And it people like, well at least I like going outside and picking out the constellations I can see at night. And this game gives you the ability to make your own constellations at night. Now you, you I saw the ladder and I saw the pie, the pizza up in space. And that's just, it's fun. So that's pretty much it. If you think a drawing game like that might attract you, especially with how it looks, you got maybe some kids or friends who are big into astronomy or looking at the constellations. This is a party game that, you know, touches on it, but at the same time, it is a fun theme and it works and it's one I'd recommend especially to families. Dice Tower Judgment approved!